As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from our research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. I'm curious for everyone who was at Esports Business Summit um, last week, and we were at the F1 race in Austin over the weekend. Any big gaming takeaways? Let's start with that. Any industry takeaways for you guys? From the Let F1 me. race? Well, look, there were, <laughs> there were a lot. I mean, there were a lot. Yeah. First of all, a lot of streamers at that race. So we know we, we, we connected with S-Fan and Alinity, who were streaming from, um, from the race. Uh, we didn't meet up with Courage JD, who Courage was at the race also. He posted that he was there. Um, and they had an entire F1 esports activation, which we did. We took a bit of footage and we'll probably publish it somewhere on one of our you know social accounts uh, in some capacity. But they had a whole activation there, right? People racing in full blown sim setups with Fanatec gear and. Uh, you know, the full-blown racing seats and everything, right? Like it was a proper sim rigs setup and people racing. Uh, no, so there were definitely like elements of gaming and esports at the race that I had not seen really anywhere else. Um, curious if you guys had any takeaways from all this. Well, I'll give one takeaway that's not exactly that, but I think just the experience of F1 and and, and how much it's grown. I mean, I saw... I think it was something like 400,000 people um, were at the race this year versus something like 200,000 in 2019. So basically doubled in two years, I think largely due to the power of, of the Netflix show and kind of the creation of that content and, and the phenomenon that Netflix and really a well-tailored content and, and story plot around uh, a sport can, can do. Uh, and, and that just leads me to think of maybe what, some esports are doing well. Some esports are not. Well, actually, most are not really doing that well. I think we've had this conversation in the past about kind of like should the should esports be more like the WWE? Um, you know, that's not a perfect example with with uh, with F1, but I think just creating uh, more narrative and and just doing uh, content really well is something that esports should do well. But I don't think a lot of the leagues, particularly some of the leagues that we we like to talk negatively about, about a lot, uh, have done it well so far. So that's my, my take. I mean, Jeff, it's a great point, which is like F1 has exploded in popularity in North America and a geography where it was previously not that popular, right? F1 was much bigger in Europe than it was in North America. And then Netflix makes this show drive exactly, to survive. Right. And all of a sudden everyone's an F1 fan. Right, everyone's a Max Verstappen fan. Everyone's a Lando Norris fan. Almost no one's a Lewis Hamilton fan. But, <laughs> but like, but but you get this phenomenon of like a, a ton of new fans coming into the sport. Can esports do this, or is it just like? Do we think that it's something about F one specifically that allowed for this phenomenon to happen? Right, that's. It's big dollars. It's, you know, billions at stake. It's these 20 year old drivers. Like, and as I'm saying it, I'm going, wait a second. Like esports sort of has some of the same elements. Is it like, can esports do this? Do you guys, I'm curious, the rest of you, do you think esports can have its drive to survive like moment? I mean, the reason why I started watching drive to survive and became extremely into F1 was all the drama behind it. Mm -hmm. And drama is something that we've talked about on this show before, like drama personalities, interpersonal conflict, kind of like building up that team rivalry, that individual rivalry, all of that stuff. Um, that kind of backstory is lacking in a lot of esports spaces. So I think if if there's some way to bring that to light or to create that or to show what's happening behind the scenes like that, then yeah, I totally think it could have a similar moment to F1. 
Exactly. And I, I think like esports has had a series of smaller moments, not necessarily as big as F1. Um, I remember when Seven Days Out premiered on Netflix. That was a huge because I had one about following uh, CLG, I believe, and Double Lift's team right after, you know, a huge tragedy had struck his family and they were entering like world's playoffs or something like that. Um, and I remember a huge influx of fans coming into the scene, but not to the scale of um, the F1 series. But I totally, I, I totally think it can because exactly, it has all the same elements. It has all the same big money behind it. It's just a matter of now finding the correct personalities to center around on the right game, really. And I think that's really it. Like League of Legends is like a, a, a tad too hard to understand for the normal person, I believe. And so that's why I think like, even though that episode was really good and brought a lot of people into the space, people were also like, that's fucking hard, man. That's complicated. Like, I'm going to stay away from that. But that was a good episode of that show, you know? Um, So like one one step lower, maybe like a Call of Duty or something or like something Counter-Strike related, something a little more easy to understand. And I think we're going to have that watershed moment. Oh, I, 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 do, totally, I, do, I do. Oh, I was just going to say really quick, I totally disagree with that in the context of F1 because that's a super complicated sport. And it like, well, well right away. Ultimately, it's racing and it's who, you know, there's places you finish in. You Ultimately, know, like, League of Legends is a team battle. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, <laughs> but I feel like even that concept is more far-fetched than a race. You know what I mean? I think at its base level, because F1 is obviously very complicated with like, you know, the, you could go so far in depth. But at its base, I think it's still a lot simpler than League of Legends. But maybe it's because I'm so in depth and like so intertwined into it already and I wouldn't be able to tell. Let me just read the Bruno's comments here. Bruno says, hi, guys. Listen, I was to the podcast. First time catching the live show. Great to be here. Bruno, great to have you. And thank you for listening to the podcast. Um, I, I hope you'll have fun here. Bruno says, uh, F1 really tried to adapt its rules to make the races more interesting as well. For a few years, the races were very boring. No overtakes. Best car would win all races. Uh, I mean, Bruno, your point's a good one. Um, to be fair, nothing F1 has done has solved any of those problems. Uh, overtaking is still really hard. DRS has helped a little bit. And the best car still does win basically all the races. Um, so... I mean, there's a reason Hamilton has seven champion drivers championships. It's not not because he was in the worst car. Um, however, they are they are making efforts, and we'll see next year if the, some of the bigger efforts to to increase overtaking do pay off because they are making the biggest changes ever, basically in the last decade. Uh, next year, so we'll we'll see if that does pay off. Having said that, I just want to come back to the esports thing. To me, esports has always been too clinical. And I think that's part of the problem because when you're so clinical, you don't get the drama, right? There's just, there's not nearly enough trash talking. There's not nearly enough sort of teams hiring personalities over sort of talent. Um, and, and I just think the thing F1 has that esports doesn't, and I don't know if esports can solve for this, is F1 has drama because you're talking about a sport where Literally anyone with a driver's license technically can do this, right? So with massive accessibility in some, in some ways, yes, you need money to be able to move up the ranks and drive, you know, F1 at some point, but fundamentally driving is a relatively accessible skill. It's not as accessible as esports, but it's relatively accessible. Um, the fact that you only have 20 drivers, like the, 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 this is, the, it's not, it's like, Imagine the NFL if it was only one team or right like the the amount of pressure it puts on these people, the amount of celebrity it puts on those 20 people, the amount of drama I think it creates because it's only between 20 people, um, I think elevates all of it. Now, I, I don't know how esports solves for that, but I think um, it is too clinical in some ways and, and lacks a bit of the character, um, you know, ahead of uh, you guys, for anyone who watched, I mean. Verstappen called Lewis like a stupid idiot, right? Like, uh, and then this, this was news. This became news, right? And gave him the finger in a $12 million Formula One car. Uh, like, I feel like esports could use a little bit of that character uh, to create some of the drama that then creates the storylines. Jimmy, you were going to say something? Um, I, yeah, sorry, I, I mean, yeah. oh, which Jimmy? Doesn't matter, either one. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I get the comparison or like J Jimmy Mondel's point about, I don't know, the, the ability to understand F1 as just like a fan of watching a race and see who's going fast. Kind of, I don't want to dumb it down too much, but it kind of reminds me of just like an entry level esports fan understanding Rocket League because they understand the concept of soccer, right? Totally different esport and, and traditional sport, very similar fundamentals, or at least like I can grasp from a beginner perspective, that that entry level understanding. What I was going to say was, um, you know, what the Netflix show did for Formula One in terms of the storytelling and the drama to Lindsay's point, which I also appreciate. I think that's just really compelling storytelling. I think if you have a crew, uh, you know, and you're just capturing a ton of content, um, at the end of the day, you'll be able to shape that narrative. And I think I, I told you guys when I, when I, you know, when we all were hanging out with each other last week, I really respected Red Bull's ability to take control of that narrative, to participate from season one, understanding that this could be big and being like, Hey, these guys are telling our story no matter what. So if we're involved and if we give them access and if we, you know, talk about our company's philosophy or, 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 you know, you know, our. I don't know, just, um, you know, about the race or whatever else is going on there, you know, that content is there and, and that narrative is there. So I think esports can capture on a similar uh, strategy. It's really more about creating more content, right? We have so many tournaments, so many sports that are going on, so many teams that are involved. Uh, what Netflix did was capture that content and then tell a great story. And so what we, ha you know, we've seen a lot of how to get better at Roblox, right? Or Fortnite competitions or teams doing, you know, uh, this and that. What we haven't seen, uh, which, you know, is something that we, we are doing at Holodeck, but that a lot of companies aren't, is that I think that behind the scenes, capturing content around events or around companies and people and figuring out, uh, I, I think, different ways to tell that story that aren't just uh, shoutcasters announcing the tournament, right? But that are, uh, you know, we don't really focus on the drama, but <laughs> I don't know, maybe we should. But yeah, that's kind of my, my two cents on it. Uh, Wani says, sorry, I'm late. I know you guys are waiting for me, Wani. Every week we wait for you. Um, Wade says, Drive to Survive wasn't on my radar. I'm going to have to watch it now based on your discussion alone. Wade, it's the best show on Netflix. Um, it, it single-handedly increased F1's viewership in North America by like 50%, I think, year over year. Um, so it is an unbelievable success and a, just a very well done show. 